everyone. We're live from the um, Medford Fells right now. Um, welcome to our first virtual Fells Day. I apologize that we all can't be out here today, but we thought maybe we would bring some Fells to all of you. Um, I want to just introduce some of the people that we are here with. Um, obviously, those of you that go to Medford High know um, the person to my right, but I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves. I'm actually Mrs. Carnabucci. Sorry, I should introduce myself first. Um, I'm Mrs. Carnabucci. I teach biology and chemistry. Hi to all my students that are watching. We have five. Five. Oh, and nice. People nice. are still joining. Nice. Love it. Hi, everyone who's who is joining us, and, and we'll do some introductions. Okay. Ms. Baytoy, teach biology and environmental science. <laughs> Hi, I'm Claire from Ms. Foy's Aware. You know more about these. Yes. She'll, she'll be doing a lot. Um, Joe is actually in the in the vernal pool right now. If we can uh, go out to that, if, and and he'll come out at some point and maybe do some introductions. Um, I'm not going to make them turn the cameras on themselves, but we do have Mr. Rocco Sieri and Miss uh, Susanna Buzzard, 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 um, uh, doing the the camera work for us. So maybe at the end they'll they'll show their faces a little bit. So um, we're here actually because we are standing next to one of the Im most important sort of aspects and um, important um, areas of the fells, and that is a vernal pool. And we wanted to make sure that everyone sort of understood what this is. We um, are about a five minute walk from Medford High School, and we are um, just trying to stress the importance. This is what happens live. We have a dog joining us. So we wanted to just stress the importance of, of vernal pools. Um, so I'm going to leave this over to Ms. Fator and she's going to talk a little bit about sort of what a vernal pool is. And then we're actually just going to do a little question answer um, with Claire and, and kind of see what's inside of this vernal pool. All right, come here. Come here, puppy. Hi, honey. Doggy wants to be in high school. Yes. <laughs> so I take my classes out here. You take biology classes yes. out here as well. Yeah, um, usually. <laughs> I, yeah, and I take my environmental uh, science students out here to the Vernal Pool. And we come at different times of the year because it looks different at different times of the year. So a Vernal Pool is basically a shallow body of water that um, sometimes it has water in it, sometimes it's dried up. So it's actually seasonal. Um, and the organisms that live in it are adapted to that, which Claire will talk more about. So when we come out here in the fall, for example, uh, September, October, it's usually pretty dry. It just looks like a mud flat. You could walk out on it, not that you would, but you, it looks like you could. Um, and it doesn't look like there's much going on. And then around November-ish, the fall rains come in and it starts to fill up and there are organisms that rely on that which we'll talk about in a few minutes that Medford High is actually um, has a part with helping that species survive and then uh, it will freeze over in the winter organisms are able to survive under that thin area of ice as long as I mean if it freezes all the way they can still survive but um, and then as it defrosts um, and it melts in the spring, you get something like this, and of course you get the spring rains. Today it doesn't look, you know, it looks moderate. Um, other times I've seen the water level be all the way up to where we're standing actually. So it can fluctuate a lot depending on the seasonal rains. And then of course in the spring, there are a host of organisms that rely on the vernal pool. Um, and I guess that's a good segue to yeah, Claire's work. Um, with the vernal pool. Yeah, so um, Claire, why don't you talk a little bit about what it is that you do specifically here and maybe a little bit in general um, as well with your organization. So I'm going to start general. So I'm uh, Claire from uh, Earthwise Aware, EWA or EWA for short. And uh, we are focused on biodiversity. And for us, what it means is uh, that we want to bring biodiversity knowledge and science, ecological ethics and environmental leadership uh, to the heart, to the core of organization and communities and into the daily lives of people. So people know us for many uh, different things such as our etiquette or uh, guides program. We worked with conservationists and uh, scientists to write you know, uh, uh, ecological guides such as you know, birding, herbing, um, 
specific type of uh, habitat, such as wetland. How do you behave? How do you handle yourself in wetlands, etc.? Uh, we also have a nature circle program, which is more about uh, nature classes plan, right? Or uh, nature lesson plans. I'm sorry, uh, where you know you can take them and get out there, you know, with your family and alone or alone and enact them, such as you know, forest immersion, a slow walk, right? Or uh, learning how to walk, you know, bare feet on the forest floor. These kind of things. But what we're really getting uh, known for is our citizen science or community science. And uh, we're very specific in the sense or unique because we are really interested in all ecosystems. So not just parts, right, but all the parts together and how they interact with each other. So we do invertebrate studies with insect surveys. We do phenology, which is a um, study of seasonal cycles on fauna and flora. We do habitat assessment. Uh, tons of stuff like that, pollution as well through a dog uh, poop mapping project, which actually tackles pollution, that's what it is. And uh, one of our little things that we love is we also tackle vernal pools. We assess them, document them, and we certify them. And we have a special permit for that because nobody in the fairs should you know, um, go into a pool or a dog should not get into a pool. What is interesting about the fairs, it has about 130 vernal pool Half of them have been certified, and I'm going to explain what certification means, and half of them have not been certified. And when you look at a map, because there is a state map, you can see that all the ones that have not been certified, therefore it doesn't have the same level of protection, uh, or good level of protection, are interspersed in between the one that has been certified. Which one did I say? I mean, you see. So they are interspersed, they are you know, kind of mixed all together. So when we saw that, we say, okay, we want to document them. Right? We want to help them, we want to certify them because it's really important to help them in protecting them and protecting what is inside. They are very fragile habitat. 40% of amphibians are endangered worldwide. And they're also a also very strong indicator of climate changes as well. So this pool specifically is special for us because this is our first pool. This is the first pool that we pulled and this is also the first pool that successfully we certified. Because there what we found is tadpoles of wood frogs, and I showed that to you a little bit later, and also spotted salamander. And they were strong biological evidence for establishing that it is indeed a vernal pool. We submitted that last October, and within a few weeks we got the certification. So or the submission so, applied. So some of the students um, in Medford High, we were in our biology classes, we actually raised marbled salamanders. Marbled salamanders have been um, have disappeared from the fells since around the 1930s, I believe. And and what we did this year, and of course we had to sort of get them out of our classrooms and we brought them to um, the zoo. So we work with Zoo New England and Grassroots Wildlife Conservation, raising these marbled salamanders. And about five or six years ago was the first group that we actually released into the fells. Medford High was the first group to raise and head start these endangered marble salamanders and release them into the fells. And we actually release them just past this vernal pool. So the hope is that as we are evaluating and surveying this pool, that eventually we'll see the marble salamander. But the spotted salamander covers it for the certification. For the certification. Right? And that's also why it's important to document continuously, not just that people say, oh, you, you, it's certified, done. No, because conditions change, by the way, as well. And then you want to see, you know, how it's going to change, move the condition of this pool, and actually if those marble salamanders are going to thrive here. Right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so what are some of the things? Why don't we get to sort of the fun stuff? So Joe has been in the vernal pool, um, and, and Claire, we should only have one person in that's, there at a time, right? Yes, exactly. That's our protocol, right? Our protocol is only one person at a time in the pool. Because as soon as you enter that pool, no matter what, you're disturbing this kind of habitat. Although we document in a way that is also very unique because we don't, for example, if we find an egg mass of a spotted salamander or salamanders in general, we don't bring, we don't get, we don't lift, we don't touch that egg mass. We leave it in. And what we do, we take the record, the evidence, with this camera, we go under the water to find it. Right? Mm -hmm. So we don't move that egg mass. So our protocol, because we're also all about ethics, is that there is only one person at a time and we try to minimize disruption. Right? And only people that are actually permitted yes. by the DCR are allowed to go into it yes. as well. Mm. So we are not telling anyone to grab some waders and, and hop into the, the vernal pool. No, what we're showing you here is that it's just a beautiful habitat. We have that here. We should know about it so that we better protect it. 
So let's see what we found. Um, if our cameras can kind of come up, just be careful where we're walking. Um, we can we can start looking at some of the cool things that we're finding inside of the, the right. vernal pool. We're going to start with this one and I'm moving that out of the sun because yeah. just that, right? So we move that out of the water yeah. and just by having it in this little uh, dish or whatever you call that, I'm French by the way. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> then what happens is um, the temperature of the water increases. So we want to release them very soon. But here what you have is a few tadpoles and from looking at them, it looks like they might be wood frog at uh, tadpoles. When I blow up the picture, I'm going to know more for sure. And you can see that by some indentation and reflection on the body part. Then. And so Claire, which ones are they looking at? The, oh, one, the one in the center or the ones? So the one in the center that are really at the bottom of this yeah. little dish are the tadpole. And I think there yeah. might be two or three in that. Uh, don't you oh, remember? there's one over here. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, there's three. Yeah. yeah. Yes, but I, I want to release those uh, quickly. And then we have the water boatmen. Am I correct? Okay. Uh, yes. yes, they mm -hmm. look like, yeah, at the surface yeah. of the water, right? So take a picture of that because we're going to release that right now. And yes. when we release, by the way, because everybody can certify a vernal pool, not here, but elsewhere. Um, when we release that, we're going to show you how we release, how we pour the water, right? Because also you want to be careful to not you know, uh, disturb them there enough disturbed enough there so the way that we do it and to get out of the is really we go and we actually submerge it and then right tilt the thing not here that would be right. terrible right. <laughs> <laughs> from that extent more like, <laughs> like oops <laughs> live stream great <laughs> right, tilt that so Joe, would you mind releasing these uh, beautiful little critters there so we're going to show, I'm going to document that. So with this wonderful uh, camera, I believe there are, it, it's still. Damselfly, yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, there is a damselfly, wonderful. So here, more advanced phase of the tadpoles. Mm. I think there are wood frogs as well. And there is also water uh, boatmen. So take a little shot there. A few weeks old. So I have a question. The I know that some people maybe want to take tadpoles and bring them home and sort of watch them morph into frogs. What what are our rules around that? Is that something we suggest doing because it's kind of fun to watch or should we kind of leave them alone? So I come from Iwa, so we're all about ethics, right? So for us, it's really to minimize disruption and to let them be, right? So okay. in the fowls, definitely should not uh, get removed, right? Plus you don't enter that pool. Elsewhere, I am for letting them be, right? Yeah. So that's uh, our philosophy. Good, thank so you. So usually we don't bring them in, we just document and then release them very quickly. Well, and for that. those that may not know, with these type of amphibians, they start off as aquatic and then they will eventually develop the legs and the ability to breathe air instead yep. of under the water. Um, and we see that with salamanders a lot with the exterior gills. And then they will come out of the water and they will always be tied to water, but they will be somewhat terrestrial, yep. right? Yeah. Um, and I don't think we understand enough yet about, no, they have a breeding pool. So by removing them completely remotely from where they are, you know, what are we doing? Do we understand really what we are doing? So for us, it's really about letting them be as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Here we're taking the records. So I'm going to take the record and we're going to release them. And there is another water boatman. Actually, I'm going to take a record, individual record here so that I have a better view. Not you, <laughs> beautiful, but not you. Here we are. Very quickly so that it moves less. It's a beautiful little camera. So you're just recording what you're finding? Yes. Okay. I'm going to take a shot of the full dish to have a count as well. So another thing that I want to quickly talk about, let me take that from here. There we go. We have the count. Is chemicals on our hands. So usually when I go in the fells, Personally, I do not put anything on me, right? Uh, I swallow it up and I go. <laughs> and <they're laughs> Okay, I'll be strong. It's just because, you know, with chemicals, we have harsh chemicals. I, I don't even go with natural stuff. I try to limit disruption again. Uh, then what happens is, you know, you affect, again, the chemistry of that pool there. And then when you have something in your hand, you avoid touching. But in the case that happens, 
no, uh, this chemical can really go into their skin. They have very porous skin, right? And it is known, would you mind uh, using that? It is known that there has been uh, effect from DEET and other harsh chemicals mm -hmm. where they completely altered uh, the developmental phases of frogs, right? So, uh, what hand tells where deformation, you see that? Yeah, you know, you are malformed. deformed. Malformation, yeah. malformation. Yeah. Deformation in French. All right, so let me uh, move that out of Sounds so line. pretty in French. Deformation. De deformation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, we have here. Oh, that's here. <laughs> what am I looking at? Um, we have here two um, um, dragonfly larva. Am I right, uh, Joe? There's some dragonfly larva and there's here. also a damselfly larva. Oh, that's over there. Okay. Can I see where? Ah, yes, yes, here we are. Beautiful. They are, I think, these critters are absolutely unbelievable. So they really start aquatic. People don't realize that those dragonflies, their first phases in life is in the water. Dragonflies are very strong, fierce predators, right? In the air. And I can talk more about that. But they start as terrific, <laughs> fierce predators under the water as well, right? So um, they go, they go for those tadpoles. Uh, but look, I'm going to show you here, right? Look at this beauty, right? And we had in um, uh, one of the uh, wild facts from Mike, he showed, so they have a lower jaw that extend in order to grab a little bit like alien. And we mm -hmm. wonder if it was not the model for, you know, alien with cigarette mm -hmm. weaver. Yeah, yeah, of right? course. If it was not those guys. <laughs> Unbelievable. You can watch that on YouTube on our channel. Unbelievable. We're going to release this one and we're going to look at that one here. Separated the Oh, thank before. you so much. Yes. This is Joe from EWA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, out of the vernal. Pool. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful naturalist. Oh, he, he knows... separated it out in that white hole. So I just want to take a quick record. There's some other there. things in there as well. Oh. The diving beetle, I believe, and uh, some other dragonfly larva. Nymphs. I'm not seeing the diving beetle here. Oh, I see maybe a potential caddis fly. At least a casing. So here, you see that? Yeah, there's a caddis fly in there. Casing. Casing of a caddis fly here. Right. So this is, uh, we have a few uh, videos on our YouTube channel, uh, zoomed in, where you can see this little uh, caddis fly, it's a fly, uh, larval phase building its house so what it does is that it grabs little twigs and little elements from the pool there from the forest the forest the pool floor mm -hmm. and they grab it assemble that glued them together they emit a kind of a glue and that becomes their house there mm -hmm. so i don't think there is anything in this one i'm touching you see what i'm doing i'm stabilizing stabilizing that no nothing on this one so let me see oh my goodness a snipe fly just dropped. Is it dead? Poor thing. I'm going to release this one. It looks like a snap fly. Snap fly. I'm going to release it here. Okay, so it was dead. Um, all right, so I'm going to release this one. I'm just checking an additional tadpole. There. Take a record of that thing here. I'm going to move that so that I have a little bit of the white. So, Claire, what do these eat? You say, especially when we talked about the dragonfly larvae, they're good predators. What do they eat in the vernal pool? Tadpoles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> For example. But that probably helps control the populations, I would imagine. That's true. And other insect, larva, mm -hmm. eggs that are um, at the bottom of the, or floats near their vicinity, mm -hmm. right? So they are really, so they eat other inter invertebrates as well. Mm -hmm. Trying to see. I know I like seeing different types of dragonflies in the yard because you know, they go after mosquitoes so mm -hmm. i love seeing them for that like dragonfly. and it's amazing when you see them dive and swoop and you know they're just amazing animals to have they're incredible i mean uh, i don't know how many species we have here uh, actually last year um i was pulling with an herpetologist who did a study in the fells matt gage in 2011 mm -hmm. a wonderful um, uh, young man and we were in a pool and we found um a, a dragonfly it was dead and so posted it on iNaturalist, that's where we record um, uh, most of our visual things, besides also submitting the application to the natural heritage site. And uh, someone contacted me to say, oh, this is, I'm blanking out about the name of this uh, uh, darner. So it's a, which one a was darner. it? Uh, 
donor. I'm not sure if it's I forgot which donor, but anyway, it's a special donor because it was the only second record in the county and we had it here, right? Oh. Record, meaning in terms of being seen. Now, right. I'm sure there are more than that, right. but pretty cool. And it was here in the cells. Do you know how to recognize, by the way, so damselfly larva, radically different, interestingly, mm. although when they are adults, they kind of look alike somehow. Yeah. Uh, although very quickly you recognize them and say, oh no, this is a damselfly, this is a dragonfly. And we're going to talk about that. Cool. Beautiful. This is your fork tail. I'm going to take a record of that as well. So damselfly and dragonfly. A damselfly? Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. That's a damselfly. Libellule in French. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sound of it, libellule. Yeah. <laughs> right, really cool. And so the damselfly have a much, in terms of adult, they have a much slender body. And so, you know, bear with me, it's not my language, so sometimes I don't use the right word, as we discovered earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? But so they have a, a kind of a very thin, long body, slender, right? Their eyes have a tendency to be on the side a little bit, a little bit like a tubular form with the eyes on the side. And when they rest, you can see that usually they rest with their wings, you know, um, folded, folded, mm -hmm. right? When you look at dragonfly, a lot of them are actually much bigger, right? With a strong thorax, whereas the bulges front face and, you know, the compound eyes are right in front there, right? And when they rest, they actually rest with their wings, four wings, you know, extended because they have a harder joint there. Mm. Uh, don't quote me, but I do believe that dragonfly, probably liberal, uh, damselfly as well, can move their wings independently so they can take so, a, yes. Yes. a very sharp turn so it's, it's hover yeah. it's just unbelievable to see them uh, you know flying around it's also super hard to really take a record of them when they're flying <laughs> but, right so <laughs> so we have a couple more minutes yeah um, I wanted to and I know obviously you've been doing this this whole time which is essentially um, citizen science and, and monitoring this vernal pool so what is it that people can do if they are interested in, in this sort of um, stuff? If they like being out in the fells, if they like um, sort of doing what you're doing, investigating what's out there, what, what do you suggest? So with respect to the fells, well, they can uh, definitely attend to some of our, we have trainings, right? Uh, where we soon when they become citizen scientists with us then you know we allow them to join us so that they can see and be trained there we're also going to do we were supposed to do a class uh, at Maso de Bon because Maso de Bon uh, habitat is also another of our sites and of course with uh, coronavirus boom but, uh, but it's going to happen and actually we're probably going to do a short version as well online we also have documentation you know, on our site about how to herb. The full documentation process that you see here, right? This is nothing else than our site, on our site, right? So we have the protocol, because we like transparency, ethics, right? Uh, out there and global science. So the entire protocol is there. In the files, again, nobody can do it on their own. So either they are with me, we are uh, two who have the permit um, in my team. And, but otherwise, you know, certifying a pool does not need to be in the fells. If you have one in your neighborhood, right, and if it is in your property, on your property, you can do it. You can really do that, and we can train you for that. If it is on the property of your neighbor, ask your neighbor <laughs> first, <laughs> but you can do that as well with him, right? So very easy, tons of documentation online on earthwiseaware.org. Uh, and um, you want to answer your question? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, what was, the, what was the website? Earthwiseaware.org. Earthwiseaware. Too. Okay. Yeah. We're cool. gonna post. We're gonna post um, the the YouTube channel and everything. We'll we'll be adding that today as well. Um, do we have any other questions? I don't know if there's any questions. I don't think there was any questions from the viewers. I don't. I don't no, someone said Happy so. Fellows Day, everyone. Do we have another critter. Yes. <laughs> oh, we have one more. Let's Critters do one more <laughs> critter, and then and then we'll, we'll sign off. Look at that. The lava oh, yes. the is diving it's beetle. Oh yes. Oops. Oh wow. Be careful. I don't, wait a minute, I'm going to try to isolate these two. I mean, just for the sake of, ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, they're fast. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Yeah, this one. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> just to not, there we go. There you are. I'm going to take a record of this one. Come on. And I'm going to show it to you. Actually, let me show it to you first. So that you can 
close your live stream. So what are we looking at right now? Predaceous diving beetle lava. Okay. Very funky looking. Yeah. <laughs> we have videos of them. Those legs. And, so they, and some have really different kind of colors as well. We have lighter ones as well. The little legs go so fast. Yeah. So that's a obviously predaceous, but I'm assuming other things eat those. Frogs and things and salmon. Yes, bullfrog, for instance, I suppose. You know, bullfrog eats everything, so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Eat my finger. Um, they, I think they also eat each other. <laughs> oh wow! So it's, 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 uh, someone wrote that was very cool. <laughs> oh sorry, uh, someone has a question. Is there any feature of a vernal pool that separates it from other bodies of water? The biological evidence. What lives in it? So what for lives example, in it? not all pool or puddles are vernal pool, right? What constitutes a vernal pool is really uh, not necessarily this uh, species here, uh, but that tadpole of a wood frog. This one is what's called an obligate species, right? So once you see them, it's only in this developmental phase, you have no doubt that this one is a vernal pool. When you see spotted salamanders, egg masses, same thing, in a certain number, that is a strong evidence that it is a vernal pool because it hosts the life of this little critters. Mm -hmm. And okay. we never have fish in yes. our vernal pools yeah. because when they dry out, the fish have nowhere to go. Oh. So the yes. difference between yeah. a pond a vernal pool and a puddle yep. is essentially the the variations on on what a what, what a vernal pool is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And cool. That's why the certification process is is so important. Yeah, yeah. You cannot certify a pool or document it for certification without finding this, you know, uh, species. So you find the species and then you're able to certify it as a vernal you're pool able to apply for a certification. Yeah. Great. Well, tell them what you do. Okay. Uh, before we leave, just because we're seeing it here, um, so Medford High has their hands in, in quite a bit of, um, of activities and, and lessons for our students, but we also work with Earthwise Aware, the Fells Educational Partnership, which is all the people that were involved um, with the Fells Day today and the ones in the last um, five or six years. I keep forgetting how many years it's been going on, 2015. Um, so we uh, work with Marbled salamanders, we also head start our um, Blanding's turtles, those we released a couple of weeks ago with um, Zoo New England, and that was also live streamed as well. Um, but another thing that we are doing is we are actually monitoring for those marbled salamanders in addition to some of the other things that live around here. So if you see over here, which at first you kind of can't see it, um, and of course I'll be like trapped when I go in here, <laughs> but this is, um, a board looks like just a normal board on the ground um, and I can show you I can zoom in on what exactly is there of course because I'm doing this live and that's what happens when you're a teacher we're not seeing anything <laughs> underneath the board um, but if you come across any of these Ooh. this says active research site do not remove I'm allowed to remove it um, <laughs> and this is another way to get involved with citizen science so it says, don't disturb any animals, but it asks you to take a picture and then email it to gwc at zoonewengland.com. Oh, cool. And uh, we got one more thing. We're never one leaving our live one stream. <laughs> we just are so excited to be don't, outside. Don't put, right? it back, don't put it back yet because there is something about how to put it back. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> so Claire's going to show how to properly put it back. Wow. Um, because it's like Pilates. You've got to like I'm do on it just live right. stream, so I'm just doing it very quickly there we go which is why you don't do things off the cup <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to remember that's why we are together to yes exactly keep an eye on each other exactly so if you wear and i've seen that some people just dropping it you don't do that uh, because you might crush something right actually if there was a salamander usually uh, the best thing to do is to put you know a twig right so either you leave the salamander in place and you put the twig so that somehow close to um, the salamander so that there is a little bit not this one actually because this one has sharp thorn <laughs> uh, so this one right let's say that's a salamander that has a little bit of elevates a little bit the board so that it can find its place back without being crushed right and it's not just about salamander right so i put it there let's say and i have a little bit of an elevation around it i might even put another one there because it's going to sink back very nicely anyway right to leave a little bit of a space so that they find their way back i see one thing to do as well is during the winter, do not touch those boards, yeah. right? Because it takes them, you know, some energy to find and build their little habitat. And by lifting that up, right, 
uh, somehow the cold, you know, um, a temperature affect them ter ter tremendously, right? So Great. this was a little ethical replacement yeah. of the log or the board. <laughs> so thank you, thank you um, so much, Claire, so much. I, I we've reached 30 minutes, so I think we can be <laughs> obviously out here all day, and we're yeah. really enjoying this. Um, I thank you so much, Claire and Joe. Obviously, you're the one. You're getting dirty out there, uh, getting some nice things for us to look at. Um, and Mr. Sierra is one of our cameramen, and, and uh, I don't know if you want to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> if you want to, you can hear my around. voice. Yeah. yeah, you can hear all the wonderful questions from the non-science person in our group. I know, awesome. right? All my silly humanities questions. That is very interesting. Very cool. Yeah, we're getting a lot of good comments. Thumbs Great. up. Great. So thank you so much. Happy thank Thursday, you. And Happy thank you very much. Ready to go do something um, and hashtag virtual fells 2020. So don't forget please, the hashtag. Please virtual keep fells. Uh, watching for the rest of the day with some interesting <laughs> videos and stuff. Thank you all so much. Bye. Yay, bye. bye. <laughs> Ending live video. Uh, oh, right. I didn't. How do you feel okay. it went? Great. I think it went great. great.